The Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin of New York, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, good morning to you. Can you add to the developing situation anything new that you know, as the president has now responded, that Iran has made a very big mistake, he just tweeted. Yeah, Iran is, is acting out. I mean, clearly, the, the pressure that the United States has been applying to Iran, they're feeling it with regards to their economy. And we also have to understand that domestic politics for Iran, uh, they seek to appease hardliners. Uh, we criticize the, the regime. It's not just uh, the senior leadership, but they, they also have people uh, on their right that they seem to be more concerned about than all of the many millions of Iranian people who actually want a free, stable, democratic, peaceful Iran. That's what they talk about uh, instead. Uh, so what we're hearing is that the uh, from uh, the, the intel uh, that we're receiving here on, on Capitol Hill is that this actually didn't uh, go down within Iran's borders. It was over international waters. Uh, Iran's going to continue to set themselves backwards if they don't engage in productive diplomacy. Uh, the United States does not want military conflict with Iran. The President of the United States does not want military conflict with Iran. Uh, we would love to see a resolution with regards to these nuclear and non-nuclear activities that Iran's engaged in. It is a tough neighborhood, as you well know. We talked about this a lot. I just want to show our viewers on the map here in the area that we are discussing, okay, sir? And then very specific question as to what's happening with our allies and what sort of support or lack of it we may be getting. On the map over here, here is the neighborhood I mentioned, Saudi Arabia, the west, Iraq to the north, Iran here. This is the Persian Gulf, Strait of Hormuz, that choke point where 20 percent of the world's oil squeezes through on a daily and weekly basis. Uh, this is the, the port city of Chabahar. According to the Iranians, this is where a truck-based missile was fired at 4 o'clock in the morning, and again, as you mentioned, uh, they're claiming credit for it. But this choke point, the amount of oil that goes through here, you know, those two tankers were hit by those landmines in the last two weeks in this exact area. Among our allies, who will come and defend us, knowing the Europeans right now uh, are fighting us on this nuclear deal? Uh, first and foremost, it's nations all throughout the Middle East greatly concerned with Iranian aggression. You have a number of countries uh, that used to view Israel, for example, as an adversary. They're so concerned with the Iranian aggression that they're actually starting to view Israel in a different light. So the alliances are shifting uh, within the Middle East. Uh, Iran's non-nuclear activities that we saw before the negotiation of the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal, during the negotiation and especially afterwards when Iran got all this cash, their vision is to build a, a land bridge across the Middle East. Uh, they worked with the Houthis to overthrow the government in Yemen. They work with Assad in Syria. Uh, they, they have great influence over the Iraqi government in Baghdad. Uh, so as far as our best allies in this effort, while there was a P5 plus one that uh, included three European countries, the UK, France, Germany, it included uh, China, it included Russia, if you want to find our, our best friends when trying to respond to what Iranian uh, aggression is happening each day, you're going to find it in the countries all around Iran greatly concerned with this aggression. Congressman, I want to update our viewers on what you see at the bottom of your screen there, that we just got word that there's going to be an 11 a.m. Eastern Time White House meeting on Iran. As far as who will be in that meeting, we know that both Pat Shanahan and Mark Esper uh, uh, attending are, are going to be attending from the Pentagon. Those, of course, are the outcoming, outgoing, and incoming acting defense secretaries. As far as our response here, what we have heard from the Pentagon, what we have heard from the president, President Trump has not ruled out using military force. Although we constantly hear, as we did from Peter Navarro, avoiding all-out war. How specifically do you want to see us respond to the latest developments? Well, first, we need to continue to make it absolutely clear to Iran that we will have zero tolerance for the targeting of, United, of the United States, of United States personnel, of United States national security interests. When you attack the United States, it's very different uh, than a situation where they might be aggressive uh, in a neighboring country. Uh, we're concerned about that, but you know, as far as red lines uh, on our end, uh, there should be a military response if we are attacked 
uh, by, by Iran. That message needs to be out there. Now, as far as the military option, again, I want to reiterate, uh, I don't want to see a military option. I want to see it's the, it's the last possible option. The president doesn't want military conflict. I don't believe that our country wants military conflict. But I do believe that it, for everyone out there who believes in the multiple instruments of national power, diplomacy, information, economics, applying economic pressure, having bilateral diplomacy, multilateral diplomacy with other nations that are concerned, or the information campaign where, as I mentioned earlier, millions of Iranians are concerned about the people leading their own country. To make those other instruments of national power more effective, it's helpful to have the military option on the table no question. as a deterrent. You're not going to get much of an argument from this administration on that. Final question with regard to the administration. What do you know about the message Mike Pompeo delivered in Iraq in the month of May that was destined for Tehran about not killing a single American? So Secretary Pompeo is very, uh, very intelligent and uh, will stand his ground uh, in being concerned about Iranian aggression, specifically uh, in Iraq, uh, as well as what we're seeing in other countries. Uh, but what we need is for the Iraqi government, uh, the, the, there are many who aren't beholden to Iran within the Iraqi government, uh, for them to know that the United States uh, has their back, their support, their encouragement to have their own sovereignty, to control their own destiny, and not allow uh, themselves to become proxies mm. for, for Iran. So I believe that uh, he, you know, in any of these conversations, he'd be well prepped, he'd stand his ground, offer encouragement and support for Understood. the Iraqis so, to, uh, to, to not we, allow Iran. We shall find out together in time whether or not Iran received that message. Thank you, sir, for your time today. The Republican Lee Zeldin out of New York. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you.